Hello, everybody. I'd like to uh, respond to Mr. Thorm and say that, uh, for a great, to a great extent, uh, these current oil prices are not so much the product of manipulation, but just the market giving us a preview of things to come. We only have 50 years left, like you said, before uh, all the really easy oil dries up and we have to start pulling it out of tar sands and nasty places that are high cost production. Well, we've we pretty much painted ourselves into a corner because governments around the world were funding oil infrastructure by choosing winners and losers and choosing oil because it's really great for both you know nice and centralized for taxation ooh, you know makes it easy to tax and also since it's um, since oil is necessary for military um, you know, military aggression. What you're gonna <laughs> run a run an M1 Abrams tank with solar pa panels? Yeah, right. Not enough power density for that. Uh, you know, pa nice the mount nice power density of oil means that you can run a military to an extent that's unimaginable. Uh, so it's not even you know. It, you know, this current crisis is mostly the work of governments over the last, well, shoot, ever since governments have been deeply involved in the, uh, you know, in the industry of energy, and they've been that way for at least a hundred years, where they've chose the winners and they've chose the losers. And we don't have o we don't have solar, we don't have wind in any large amounts. We don't even have hydroelectric, although that's more due to environmentalists that get so worked up over the fact that we don't have, um, you know, that, that the scenic canyons and river rafters won't have any place to go. But uh, it would definitely help solve our power problems, as pumping water uphill and then bringing it back down is a great way to. Uh, solve the intermittency problem or part of the part of the way to solve the intermittency problem of solar and wind but no no they, they don't want to do infrastructure on solar and wind because it's not good for military uh, belligerency and sending can you imagine just sending IRS agents to hunt down every little solar and wind panel and try to tax those people you're crazy <laughs> it's not going to happen <laughs> I can just see that, yeah. I can just see that now. IRS cracking down on people installing solar panels and paying up front fully in cash. <laughs> uh, or even a supplementing part of it fully in cash so that they don't have to. Uh, <laughs> they so can void some taxes. Oh, man. You think, they, you think the IRS had a problem getting plumbers to actually pay? The taxes that they that they owe. Oh God, this will be this would be much worse, much much worse. So you know, it, you know, there's no little wonder that the government has enjoyed fossil fuels. Nice big huge plants. They like coal. They like nuclear. Big huge plants that can't be moved. You know, can't be moved around. Heck, solar. You can take it with you wherever you go. So no wonder they hate it. <laughs> it's not it's not rocket scientists uh planning our energy policy it's government bureaucrats that love predatory taxation and you can't tax energy receipts if the energy can be moved around and fiddled with you know it's not it's not really possible <laughs> so uh you know just don't even consider <laughs> that we are going to need, in closing, we're going to need alternative energy, at least for electricity production, you know, and hydrogen power is another another big one. You know, you can make plenty of hydrogen with a rather small device, about the three or four times the size of a human being. That's something that's portable enough to where you can move it around on a truck. Um, and hell, you could even use solar energy to provide the energy to make the hydrogen. <laughs> you know, I mean, governments must be hating this new economy. I mean, they talk a good game about energy, um, and they, they give inconsistent subsidies to solar, but it's the giant built-in subsidies where governments allow really cheap um, building of infrastructure. That, that 
that's the big thing. The oil infrastructure is all paid for by governments. And uh, they want a return on that investment in terms of taxes. So lobby your congressman. Give them, you know, he make them hear that the you know, people out there, those of you who understand this, make them hear that this kind of shenanigans, well, for one thing, we can only do it for 50 more years. Let's, you know, cut the crap and have our power, you know, created in a way that, uh, that might not be as advantageous for politicians, but it'll be advantageous for you and me and everybody else that is going to, we can either deal with peak oil by letting it become a crisis and, you know, where there's, you know, min millions of people die because one of the things Mr. Thorne didn't even mention is the fact that almost all fertilizer is made from oil. So, burning the stuff is really bad. We really need the fertilizers to keep going until we find some better method of uh, renewing soil. And, uh, you know, unless you want to have huge numbers of people die. And, and it could, you know, even deaths in the industrialized first world. It, we're going to have to find some new ma method of doing this. So, thank you all. But uh, yeah, you know, if you want to, if you want to figure out who the ultimate people to blame are, it's not the, you know, I'm sure the the commodity futures traders have something to do with this current price spike. But mainly, it's just the market saying, "Hey, bastards." <laughs> You went and tried to have it a, a uh, an economy based on one form of energy. So now you're being t completely uh, taken to the cleaners by those who control the energy supplies. And even worse, it's mostly inflation. The price of oil has remained pretty much stable. And when you think of it in terms of gold, do the numbers yourself. Compute the current price of gold, which is like eight fifty, nine hundred or so into the price of oil. See how many gold coins it took to buy a certain number of barrels of oil throughout the history starting from when oil was first started as a commodity. It's pretty much flat. Until recently, there's a little spike now and there's a little spike in the 70s, but it's much flatter. So most of this is about inflation too. There we go. It's the government all over again. Run the numbers, you'll see that I'm right. Yeah. Elect Ron Paul next time. Too bad it's it, we can't do it this time. But you know, it takes time for the public to realize these things that the mainstream media lets go. Okay, so take care, people.